maintain during the winter months. We're going to have more on how to keep your humidifier clear and clean up next. Very foggy out there this morning. Wet, gray, drizzly, kind of yucky, but hey, 36 degrees, 948 this Saturday morning. Thanks for being with us. In the last couple of weeks, we've all been setting our thermostats a little bit higher and hearing the furnace kick in. If you will, we are back in our cocoons. That's right. Now, even though we all want to stay warm, we need a little moisture in that heated air, and that means uh, tending to the humidifier on your furnace. And for tips on how to do that, we turn, turn to our handyman, Dale Cranston. Okay, what we're going to do here is we've come down. Another thing before we get to working on other projects, we've got to service the uh, furnace here a little bit. So I've got my replacement uh, humidifier uh, evaporator pad here, because I just replace them. There's instructions of how to clean them, but here it says replace yearly. I, I replace them every time I see them. And then this is a, uh, uh, a type of pleated filter that can be used. We have a different filter in here, but that's a, that's a part that can be used. And uh, now we're going to get at it. So uh, we'll, usually these humidifiers, they may be in tight spaces or something like that. They're hard to get to. That's why people don't service them. And uh, what a humidifier does, it'll, it'll add to uh, the humidity content in your house because winter is very dry around here. So what we'll do is, uh, we know that this is all crusty in here and hard from minerals in the water from running all last season, so I'm going to go in here and just try and pull this out of here. Okay, so here we are, sure enough, and it's drippy and wet, but see it's all crusty and hard from the, uh, and it's supposed to be soft like our, our new one. It's all crusty and hard, and the minerals are on here, too. So we're just going to kind of clean these minerals off a little bit, and I'm going to pull this pad off. Let me see if I can pull this off. It's really rendered pretty useless when it's all crusty like this. We'll just get this old one off. Okay. There's new different types of humidifiers nowadays, too, that are, um, uh, it's an all-time running type of humidifier. Uh, I mean, it's a continuous run. Now, it has to have a floor drain in order for it to operate, but it doesn't, it eliminates this pad that gets all crusty and, and messed up. <laughs> See, this is the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like a big sponge, is what it does. It works like, uh, it just fills up with, with water. It turns around and fills up with water. And the hot air circles past it and picks up moisture through it. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in place. I'm going to check my water level in there. Plenty of water. And sometimes, every other year, every few years, we'll take this bottom portion off and we'll scrape all the, all the uh, sludge off from in there. Use half part vinegar and half water. And it'll break off some of those uh, minerals. Okay, so what we'll do before we put the top on is we will uh, we'll double check and we'll make sure we'll go upstairs, we'll turn on the thermostat, and make sure that the furnace is running so that um, I can make sure that it's turning. That's why we have this little window here. Make sure it's turning. And for now, what we'll do is we'll go over here and we will, uh, uh, we're going to turn on the, make sure the water supply is turned on. Now these little valves here, sometimes they, you know, when they're out like this, they're on. Sometimes when they're in, they're on. So you're just going to have to, you know, check it, turn it on, and then check it. Okay, now this is going to be our humidistat. Now, on the humidistat, what we're going to do is we keep it pretty high because what happens is people don't usually come down and uh, mess with their humidistat. So um, I usually keep it up here between 40 and 50. I keep it up pretty high. Okay, we kicked on our furnace. We got the... It's... it's the humidifier is basically hooked to the fan switch. So you hear the burners coming on. You got to wait till the fan comes on. Then uh, we can see that the um, we can see that it's turning in there and it's getting wet with water. Our reservoir is full of water. We got a good flow in the water, so we're back up in action. And yeah, that's a pretty important feature because a lot you can really dry dry out your <laughs> sinus and everything if you don't have that. You say you yeah, don't I'm even know if you have one. I'm trying to figure out if I even have one of those. I have to go down and look. If you don't, shows us how to get rid of the old noisy one with an improved, quiet one. Okay, this Saturday, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a new bathroom fan. And this can, sh this, you can see up here, we've got one of these old style, small, little noisy fans that's basically ineffective. We're going to put in a new, low sewn, brown, hundreds. How to get rid of the old, noisy one with an improved, quiet one. Okay, this Saturday, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a new bathroom fan. 
And this can sh this you can see up here. We've got one of these old style small little noisy fans that's basically ineffective. We're going to put in a new low zone Brone 100 CFM bathroom fan that's really going to draw and we're going to ventilate it properly. Okay, this is what we're going to be using here today. We've got our low zone or quiet Brone fan here, and this is the size of exhaust that we got on here. It's a full three and a quarter by ten exhaust. So we're going to transition that down into a round, a flex, a flexible seven inch round uh, piece of duct that we're going to take and exhaust it outside. The other fan that we had was just blowing right into the attic and that's typical and that's not good. So we're going to take this through to a roof vent or a soffit vent or a ridge vent and these are some other tools we might use. A pair of electrical pliers that we're going to be cutting the wire with and the pry bar, hole saw, maybe a screwdriver and the hammer that we're going to use to get out the old fan. So what I'll do first here is I am going to take the cover off the old fan and look and see what kind of design that I've got and I'll find the electrical supply for the fan motor, pull that cord out, find out my fan motor is screwed up in there so I'm able to just take the fan motor and the whole fan out of there and see how it's connected. Then I'll determine the electrical supply, uh, take it off the cover here and get that cover off and I can see and I'll disconnect the power supply from my fan box. Then after that I'll determine exactly where the fan is connected to the raft or whatever, and I'm just going to pound this old fan out. I'm going to pound it up into the attic. So it's scrap and debris will just fly up into the attic, and I'll be able to pry bar off any of the fasteners that's holding it onto the rafter. Okay, once I get that, then I'll grab my new fan. I kind of trace on, trace on the, uh, the, I just put the fan right up there, onto the ceiling. I will use a template, all this other stuff. I'll just trace it right on there. Then I'll come back, get my nice, uh, hole saw for cutting the plaster. And this plaster is kind of chippy a little bit, but my escutcheon plate for the fan cover will cover that. And I'll cut. And I'll cut my hole. I'll start along this rafter here so that when the fan is finally mounted, it will go up against the uh, uh, rafter. And I'll cut out this plaster here, get it all the way around. And then what I'll have to do on this particular fan, I'll take it up. I'll have to take it up through the attic to drop it down from the top. I can't actually put the fan up through the hole because of the, uh, the mounting brackets and stuff. I'll go up there and I'll drop the fan down from the top. And you can see when I'm gonna drop that down from the top, with the ceiling rafter again, I can screw my fan right into the side of the ceiling rafter so I get a nice firm mount for that fan that cuts down the vibration and the noise. Now I'm gonna put a new hole right through the metal housing here. You can see, the nice insulation that they have on this, so it keeps it quieter, quieter running into the big fan motor. It's a good sized fan. Okay, we'll just screw in our last couple of screws here for the cover, and we'll just turn it on, and there you have it. Nice, quiet, efficient running fan. Nothing like the sound of a quiet fan. Well,